Well, welcome back, and it's time for us to talk uh, politics. Just a month and a day after elections happened in Edo State, uh, Gordon Obaseki versus Osagezi Yamo, part two. And Obaseki came out triumphant for a second time. And for a second time, he is going to hold the hems of affair at Osadebe House, the Edo State Government House. And next, that's tomorrow, we're going to, is going to be inaugurated and... Um, together with his deputy, Philip Schwago. And we're going to have discussions around what to expect in Edo State for a second term uh, for Gordon Obaseki. Already, he's facing uh, uh, the litmus test over the routes and the protests that happened. It was in Edo State you had over, um, uh, uh, over a thousand people escaped from prison. But the, the governor yesterday uh, was at the State Assembly, and um, here is what he had to do. Let's watch this. The 2021 budget is primed at strengthening the state's healthcare system across board, sustaining the gains we have made in the educational and social sectors, and providing needed stimulus to drive food security, supporting the weak and vulnerable in our society, and actively engaging our youths. We are here to support you and help you take Edo to the next level. All right, um, let's go to the next level. Uh, with the senior, with the special advisor to the governor of Edo State, uh, Gordon Obaseki, that's Crusoe Osage. Crusoe Osage joins us uh, from Benin, the Edo State capital. Hello, Crusoe. Hi, bro. how are you doing? Excellent. Um, great to have you join us, and, uh, and first and foremost, before uh, we delve into what is happening uh, with um, the governor's plan for a second term in office tomorrow. I know it's a big day for you and for the people in Edo State as um, we look towards the second term of uh, Gordon Obaseki. What, give us some update in terms of what is happening with the NSAS um, update from the governor's side of, side of you, um, uh, Crusoe. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, the NSAS... Um protests uh, that held a few weeks ago uh, had the full support of, of the governor. I mean, uh, at the beginning, these young people came out, you know, in protest against uh, police brutality and uh, who would not support that. So the governor gave them his full support. The deputy governor marched with them on two occasions. You know, it was only later when uh, the very peaceful protest was hijacked by other criminal elements that, you know, it became a crisis. But, you know, by and large, uh, the NSAS protest and police brutality protest was fully supported by, by the governor. And But the brigandage that followed after it was hijacked, you know, is condemnable and, uh, you know, we don't support that at all. I, I, I mean, I, I do, I do State did feel the brunt of what happened. I was going through a number of, um, of, of pictures and... Um, media while this was playing out. And one of the most striking, striking things was the attack on police stations and the prison, the Oko uh, Correctional Center, where you had nearly 2,000 people escape. Give us an update on that. I, I'm, I'm lost with, in terms of the numbers of who have returned or are still um, away from the prison. Yeah, I, I think 1,993 inmates escaped from the two correctional facilities. And uh, to date, I think uh, just about 100 or so have returned. So you still have quite a number of them at large, which is w what has exacerbated the security challenges in the state and around the region. You know, imagine having over a, almost 2,000 uh, criminals, some of them very dangerous criminals on the loose. You know, so the police is still grappling and trying to hold it together, you know, and steps have been taken to try to bring them in and bring them back. But by and large, you know, that's the that's the negative effect of of uh, the hijack of the protest by 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 criminals. You know, uh, while the the decent people were just trying to advance mm -hmm. in just court, uh, this these uh, criminals came and, and turned it to something else. You know, now even the entire entire protesters themselves and everybody who was a victim and was complaining is now also in danger because these criminals do not. Uh, Discriminates, you know, against uh, people when they attack. They, they, they attack wherever they, they, they stumble on. And so, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a big challenge we're dealing with in the state right now. You know, Crusoe, I, I, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking about um, the precarious uh, security situation 
your state is facing, together with several states where um, at the heart of the matter is unemployment. So because we will find the correlation strongest in places where you have large number of youths without access to employment, which is what many states, including Lagos and several states across the country, are having to deal with. The governor begins the second term uh, tomorrow when he's sworn in, and I did uh, listen, uh, uh, glean from his uh, speech before the State Assembly yesterday on what the plan exactly was to do with unemployment, rising unemployment among youths um, in, Endo, uh, in Edo State. What's the new agenda like for uh, employment opportunities for youths in Edo State? Yeah, the governor has been very unequivocal in his um, statements concerning uh, uh, what he plans to do with the youth in the new administration. Uh, but but uh, permit me to take you down memory lane and uh, explain some things that happened in the previous administration, uh, which is, of course, is still an active administration until tomorrow. You know? So, uh, you know, the governor promised to, to create 200,000 jobs, mostly for the young people in the state. And uh, once, that administ once this administration started, um, young people were called to come and register, cool, so. you know, put their names down, put their disciplines so. down, put their the skills that they, they they have to render services down. And then we built a very huge database. And from that database, we started gleaning uh, bit by bit young people and placing them in, in, uh, in, uh, in different jobs. Uh, and to date, we have created about 160,000 jobs, you know, we are, with an outstanding less than 40,000 to meet the, the promise that was made. So these efforts are going to be, you know, uh, scaled, you know, upwards in, in the new administration beginning tomorrow. Uh, the governor is going to do much more of that. If you listen to the governor when he addressed youths during the NSAS protest, you know, uh, you, you heard him say that his, his uh, target is to have at least 60% of his cabinet made of young people. And anybody who knows the governor well will know that that is a correct statement because the, the chief of staff of Edo State Government, as we speak, uh, Mr. Ethan Zahame, is just only 37, 38 years old. Uh, we have ministers that are under 40, not le not less than 10 of them, you know, you know, and, and other 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 young people, even like myself, you know, far be, far below 50, you know. So, so if the governor says he's going to make uh, a youth the priority or the, the core team in his administration, then I'm sure you should believe him. So in, he actually says 60% of, of the new administration is going to, make, is going to be made up of youth. But going away from that, we're going to be embarking on massive reforms in the civil service, you know, uh, come this new administration. The governor is going to put mm -hmm. emphasis on human capital development, you know, enhancing and honing people's skills and bringing skills on board to, 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 to government. Uh, so, so, so to that extent, we're, we're, we're going to be hiring thousands of people in, in the first one year of this administration. We're not just hiring hiring people for the, for the sake of it. We're going to be hiring people who have skills, uh, people who have skills in in uh, 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 urban planning and and, uh, and fiscal fiscal and urban planning. People who have skills in in engineering and and and, uh, and construction. People who have skills in. In, uh, in, in psychology, physiology. Excellent, uh, Crusoe. I, I'm, I'm sure. Um, so. This this be like the sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Crusoe. This this be like um, the preview of the governor's um, uh, speech tomorrow. I can imagine the things he's probably going to be saying uh, to millions of people in Edo State. Yeah. Tell tell me something. We we hope and pray that all of the employment and um, uh, empowerment um, objectives and goals of the government works for the good of the people in Edo State, because if it doesn't work, we'll all be damned for it. Because I can imagine that across many um, local government areas in Edo State, the, the palpable fear you feel, especially when you imagine um, hoodlums and miscreants, which you mentioned earlier on, attacking police stations and cutting uh, away arms. I mean, at the Gwerben, uh, y yesterday, I, I did understand that uh, robbers raided the police station and um, went away with ammunition, which is something that I'm sure that um, you probably are thinking. If you cannot secure your state in a way which is safe for residents mm -hmm. and businesses to come in and invest, it becomes a huge problem. What about security? What do you do about um, police stations which are being outgunned, outmanned, and being outrun by hoodlums in, in a way we haven't seen maybe since the days of Lawrence, the law, Anini? 
Yeah, well, um, you, you, I'm sure you know that uh, the security agencies in this country are not under the control of any governor. So, so which is why uh, there's a clamor for some some level of restructuring because uh, you can't be chief security officer of a state yet you do not have control over the security apparatus of that of that state. You know, so, so the security uh, agencies are, are directed straight from the center from by the federal government. And so there, there's limited, you know, uh, you know, we can only achieve a few things, you know, because we don't have direct control over these security agencies. However, we're not going to rest on our hours just because we don't uh, we don't have control over the police and the military and and the DSS and the civil defense. Uh, we're, we're working out our own, uh, you know, uh, local security with the locals in the state to help, you know, support uh, effectiveness of, um, of, uh, of of policing in the state. Uh, we, we have a, a group of uh, young people called uh, Public Works uh, Volunteers, poor. You know, the, the, we have we've had about uh, 2,000 of them as we speak, and we, have, we, do, we do the hiring, you know, from word to word across the different local governments in the state. These people are going to serve as you know, intelligence providers for the police so that uh, before crimes happen, they can be stopped. We're also working with different um, uh, local vigilantes and hunter groups, you know, organizing them into teams and ensuring that they help to secure their various communities. Because it's come down right to each uh, state trying to find local solutions to the security challenges that they have. Because clearly, as it is right now, it's looking like the police, the police, the civil defense, and the rest of them are seriously overwhelmed by the security challenges in the country. Uh, every time we have the elections happen and the governor wins or the governor is taken out, it oftentimes offers us an opportunity to understand lessons in democracy and the different branches and arms of government, how they work and interact. Yesterday I saw the governor of, uh, uh, Governor and Governor-elect of Edo State, uh, same person, Governor Baseki, at the State Assembly. And it got me thinking about the relationship between the executive and the legislature for several wrong reasons. Uh, in the past, um, Edo State has been a reference to, to how the legislature should not work. And it's the way it's being operated. At some point, you have had several members not be inaugurated and denying the opportunity to millions of people in the state to, you know, have th their say in how uh, the state is governed. Uh, I'm sure as a Democrat yourself together with the governor, they say 2020 is hindsight. You probably would have done things in a different way uh, to arrive at a different result, most likely. The next four years will be crucial for Governor Basaki, will also be crucial in understanding how he intends to work with a united le uh, 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 state legislature or a divided one. Which do you go for? Yeah, well, uh, I need to clear something here. Um, what happened in the state House of Assembly in Edo State had nothing to do with uh, the governor. Uh, we all know who was underneath the crisis. Uh, you know, Comrade Adam Soshomale, who was the uh, ultimate godfather in Edo State until we dethroned him on September 19th, was the one who called out this uh, House of Assembly member, member elects and prevented them from coming to, to to join their colleagues in the, in the House of Zambia. And Obaseki had nothing to do with that. Obaseki made repeated you know, recalls to these individuals to come and represent their constituents you know, in the House of Assembly, but they bluntly refused because their godfather had told them that he was going to use certain unconstitutional means to railroad them into the House and seize the leadership of the House. So that's what resulted in the crisis in in those states, uh, House of Assembly, even when the courts, you know, ruled that the House had been duly inaugurated and that other members should join them, they refused. So, so, so Obaseki did not play any role in that uh, challenge that bedeviled the State House of Assembly. However, you know, uh, we believe that uh, going forward, because these uh, unconstitutional actors, like my governor refers to them, uh, the likes of Adams Shomali have now been removed from the scene. There's going to be relative peace in the polity. I would believe that uh, the House of Assembly, which is very united as we speak, is going to become even more united as we go ahead. You know, and, and this is going to work all the all the more for the good of the state. 
Several states uh, had a double whammy experience. I, I guess like uh, several states in the country probably be thinking they put the reset button as quickly as possible uh, to get this year done and over with so we can get into 2021. But the problems of 2020 um, will leave and the consequences thereafter will face from 2021 on. I, I mean, it'd be a fool's thinking to imagine that um, we get in 2021 and then all the problems will just will go away and we can begin uh, to go on with life as usual. The coronavirus pandemic had massive impact, not just in Edo State, but across several states in the country. Same with the routes that happened um, across several major capitals in the country. One fifty-three billion naira budget proposal I see the governor has put forward, but these are going to be hard times in 2021 for every state I can imagine. What do you tell people in terms of what is possible and what is not possible? Yeah, a lot is possible, you know, even if it is a 153 billion naira budget. Uh, the challenge we've always had in this country is corruption and diversion of uh, public funds. If public funds are uh, uh, judiciously dispensed, it, it always uh, would serve the people. So, 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 so the challenge is how, how efficiently do you manage the resources, which is which has been the, the mantra of the Obaseki administration, and which is what caused the political crisis in the first uh, in this first uh, tenor, because certain elements within you know the government and the party where, where we moved from believe that the uh, government money was just meant to be dispensed and disbursed for personal uh, uh, gratification. But, but since, like I said, we have all these people behind us now, government fund is going to be, you know, uh, unencumbered by by him, by the greed of individuals. And so it will be directed at the needs of these people. If you listen to the governor carefully yesterday, you find that he paid a lot of, he, he made a lot of uh, promises through the, the budget um, proposal that uh, there will be vulnerable people in society were going to be catered for, you know, in this budget, that uh, we, Thousands of uh, do people are going to be employed into the civil service you know, within this budget. That the operating environment is going to be enhanced so that investments can flow into the, the state within this budget. That security was going to be managed better so that the, the operating environment would be more clement for the flow of investment to come in in this budget. So 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 yes, the 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 uh, COVID nineteen challenges has um, has uh, caused uh, some sort of. Uh, 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 upheaval in global economy and even in, in Nigeria and in Edo State. But for, for some of us, we think it's more blessing than, than curse. You know, how many times have you traveled to, to the UK or America this year? Uh, I don't think um, many times. I have not traveled out of Nigeria this year. You know, and it usually was not the case. We all used to hop into planes and go to, go to uh, developed countries to spend our holidays. But we're spending our money in Nigeria now. So for us, we believe that those are the positive sides of COVID-19. We are getting to manage our resources better. We are, we are, we are facing the reality of fixing our, our own space and our own country and our own states for ourselves because people who used to hop abroad now for medical treatments, I'm sure it's going to be as easy as it used to be in the past. So they have to seek medical treatments here in Nigeria. So it behoves on us as government now to fix the medical uh, uh, the centers where medical services are, are rendered, you know, and so on and so forth. You know, so 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 yes, uh, COVID nineteen has has had a negative impact on on economies, but also has had some some positive impact because it's forced to rethink, you know, how on how uh, government monies are spent. It's forced to rethink on, on, on responsibility in, in disposing uh, government revenue. That's forced to rethink on on how we look after our assets and our services within the country. Right, right, Crusoe. I mean, we've done some virtual traveling this year, lots of virtual uh, traveling. If you find a way of monetizing <laughs> these virtual travels, who knows, probably more expensive next year for us to have this sort of um, <laughs> convergences. But talking about um, with, with the state budget, I, I, I did find interesting um, the governor's talk in closing, um, looking at social investment, education, health, health care, very, very, very important because of um, they say the COVID-19 exposed the, um, the ugly rump. Countries like Nigeria and you know, a number of countries have had to face who haven't improved the healthcare sector. Education, very quickly, and, and, and healthcare, oh, what exactly is going to happen uh, next year and in the next four years with Adele State? 
Yeah, in, in Edo, in Edo State, uh, during this first tenure, we paid a lot of attention to basic education, which is primary education. And I dare say that uh, we built the most robust uh, basic education system in, in this country, and if not in Africa. You know, Edo State emerged the only uh, sub-national that received support from the World Bank to support education, you know, you know, in this country. No, no, no other state in this country was given uh, support by the World Bank except Edo State. You know, the, our counterparts in the support we got were only countries like Rwanda and so on and so forth. You know, so, so, so we did a fantastic job there. So what we're doing in the, in the next administration is to scale, you know, you know, from basic education to the, the first tier uh, senior secondary. So from GSS1 to GSS3, it's going to see the kind of revamp that took place in from primary one to primary six. So, so we're, we're investing huge resources in, in that direction to ensure that the children who have now been, you know, straightened out in the very structured basic education system in Edo State don't go into a dysfunctional senior secondary school. So we're fixing class one to class three, GSS one to GSS three, so that people who are moving out of very organized basic education system will also move into a, a relatively organized uh, senior uh, uh, junior secondary uh, sector. So so from there, we now move to senior secondary. So, so that's how we have faced the transformation of the education system in Edo State. Uh, then, then with the health sector, we're also paying a lot of attention to to basic to to what we call primary health care. You know, but but beyond that, we believe that the challenge you know that that we face in healthcare service delivery in in, in Nigeria, in, I dare say in Edo State, is access you know to to the services. Uh, most people do not have the resources to pay for the medical services that, services that they need, and so that's why we are prioritizing health insurance. We have set up an agency. To, to, to manage health insurance in Edo State. The state government has put down a kickoff capital for that health insurance scheme, and we're getting locals to, to, to become uh, contributors to that scheme so that they can benefit from, from uh, the coverage provided by, by this scheme. So, so in which case, if you're a market woman, and on a daily basis, you contribute 20 naira to that uh, fund, and you're given a card, anytime you have need to go to hospital, just take that card with you, and mm. then you have to mm. you, you access services without paying out of pocket. We're going to be de developing all of this in in this right. second term. We, we we don't believe as a government that all the investment that needs to be made in in uh, in uh, health healthcare right. service delivery should be made by government. We believe that the private sector can also make this investment. All that, all right. that we'll have we'll have to leave it at that. that uh, citizens uh, are able to. All right, we have to leave it, leave it at that. Thank you I very much. All, all in a wrap. Thank you very much. Uh, Kruso Osage has got plenty yeah. of work to do. Um, mm -hmm. Tomorrow is his big day. Same with the governor and millions of people in Edo State as uh, Governor Godin Obasek is sworn in for a second term as executive governor of Edo State. Kruso Osage, special advisor on media to the governor of Edo State. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. All right, let's take a quick break. We come back and we will have a big discussion on the panels of inquiry we talked about with our correspondents across locations. We're going to nail it in and drill in deep with, I'll let you into activist and guest for our next segment after this. Please stay with us. <laughs> 